Hi everyone, James Wiffen here for AE Tuts, and today we're going to be looking at creating the Rorschach ink blot effect. For those of you who want to jump straight in and just get started using the source files, then you can probably skip this part. I'm just going to talk about the setup of the shoot for those of you who want to film yourself as Rorschach and create some custom geometry of your own head. One thing I'd also recommend is watching the making of uh, Rorschach in the film Watchmen by this company called Intelligent Creatures, and they do a completely 3D approach, uh, which looks absolutely amazing. And it runs for about 20 minutes, and this article I think was done by FX Guide, so definitely something to check out. Okay, let's continue. Okay, so here we have the source footage, and let's just take a look. And our first thoughts might be we should probably fire the costume designer. Oh, wait, that's me. Um, so what we've got is myself with a black stocking over my head, and then a white stocking over, over that as well. And the reason for that is if you just have one stocking, it's too transparent. And you'll see your facial features underneath. So have uh, make sure you have two stockings, and uh, also a silly hat and a red Simpsons dressing gown. But apart from that, um, let's talk about the tracking markers. And you'll notice that there's quite a lot of them, and also there's different ones. So basically, what I did first was I had I used a whiteboard marker, and I put the tracking dots on, which are these things here. And I didn't realize that the uh, the mask would stretch so much because it's a stocking. So it's supposed to have a head in it. Um, so yeah, when I put the uh, the whiteboard marker on here, the dots were actually quite small. But then when it stretched, they became absolutely massive, and uh, they weren't really useful as tracking markers. So I tried to wash them out, but then I realized you can't wash them out. So we've just got these. Uh, yeah, terrible marks, markers here. So then I decided to just leave them in because I couldn't get them out and put uh, these smaller dots here. In a, in a, and I tried to put them in a grid pattern, which helps, but uh, obviously I couldn't see myself when I put the uh, stocking over my head. So um, I couldn't actually make sure everything was straight. So as you can see, they're crooked and such, uh, but that's okay. Also, you'll note that there's actually quite a bit of movement of the head, which is good because uh, it makes the effect look a lot better. We don't want to just uh, have the we don't want to just have a freeze frame here and, and uh, place the uh, the ink blot over here because it won't look anywhere near as good. We want to see the whole face. We want to see it rotate and move and such. Also, you definitely don't need this many tracking markers. I was just going absolute overkill. Um, the more tracking markers you have, the uh, the better the, the track can be. Not necessarily, but you know, the safer you are with the track. Uh, with this many tracking markers, you know, pretty much impossible not to track this shot. Um, but it definitely adds a lot more work uh, when you have to clean them out. And this shot here is about four seconds, and it took me more than four hours to paint all these out properly. So um, maybe go for a happy balance in between if you're setting up your own shot. I'd probably have about one third or two thirds this amount of tracking markers if I did it again. Uh, but you always, it's not, it's not a terrible idea to have this many tracking markers because uh, you better, some people will say you better be safe than sorry. I mean, if you, uh, if you have too little and you've gone and filmed it on, on set and you open it up on, on your computer and there's not enough tracking markers then, and the shot can't be tracked, then you're, uh, then you're stuffed. You have to reshoot. So it's probably a good idea to have a happy balance in between and, and experiment, see how many tracking markers you need. Also with a shot like this, it's in broad daylight, lighting's really even, uh, there's, there's not too much grain because of how light it is, and it's a really easy shot to track. Uh, if you had, like in the Watchmen movie, it's uh, most of the scenes are very dark, and it's uh, the lighting is never as bright as this, so that would be much harder to track. So you might want to consider uh, different amounts of tracking markers for different uh, shooting situations. Once we've filmed our source footage, it's important that we get some reference photos so that we can create an accurate model of their face, and we'll use that model in geometry tracking. And the closer that is, the model is to their real face, the easier that process is going to be. So what I've done is I've just taken two photos, one from the front and one from the side, of my face with the mask. And uh, this points out that if you only have one layer of stocking, you can definitely see the facial features, so definitely have two layers. And uh, for this shot, or for this setup here, sorry, I was sitting on a, one of those office swivel chairs and able to take 
uh, a photo of the front and then just swivel to the side at 90 degrees and take a, a photo. And it's important that the eye level is uh, about the same and the, and the angle of the face is uh, completely straight, but it's very hard to get that perfect, uh, especially when you have a mask over your head. So what we will do now is uh, open up Photoshop and we'll put these two in here and we'll create, uh, we'll, we'll edit them a little bit so we can, so they match up a bit better so that when we put them into the 3D program they'll be correctly lined up as, as best as possible. We're not going to get it perfect but we'll try as best we can. So I'm just taking one image and putting it in the other and I'll uh, extract, sorry I won't extract, I'll delete uh, the, the section that we don't need so just using the selection tool Control shift i and delete that so uh, now I just have this face here and uh, a good thing about having all these extra tracking markers is that we can use them as uh, to line up the, the two images as best as possible. Um, so because uh, I swiveled to the side as you can see the face hasn't lined up completely correctly the, the, uh, the, my face here is actually slightly further away from the camera so uh, make sure you have rulers turned on and I'll drag one down to the, where his chin is and I'll move the second image to match okay so that bottom line matches up cool but if we move or oh, sorry if we draw a line here we'll see that the uh, the nose is definitely not matching up so I'll actually I'll put this one to a dot which I can see on both of them so maybe I'll put drag it to this dot here on my lip and we can see that this dot here is actually this dot here so this one needs to be bigger so that we can align both of those and for every extra line that we add we have to make sure that everything matches up so that matches up about right I might just double click on the background layer and move it over a bit okay so that is about right there okay and now the next one will be maybe this line sorry this dot here drag it down and uh, it, Photoshop wants to snap it here because I think it's the middle of the uh, document but if we zoom in a bit closer by pressing control plus we can refine that a bit okay and that dot there is this dot here so we'll need to enlarge the picture yet again okay and this dot here will align this one okay we see that they pretty much match up already so we're looking pretty good here if we have all these lining up and we have four reference rulers here that'll make it pretty accurate for us so I want uh, both pictures to be the same size so what I will do is I'll create a new layer and just uh, draw out make sure it's set to uh, fill pixels and I'll draw out the framing that I want and make sure that it uh, covers the entire head and I'll actually use the red color okay and I'll just set this to a blending mode where I can see through it such as multiply and um, sorry it has to be big enough for both pictures so I'll enlarge it and I'll just turn this one off for a bit I'll just make sure that it's big enough nope okay that's big enough there, cool. Alright, I'll move, uh, actually I'll, I'll crop this one first. So what we want to do is the reason we have this frame, this transparent framing here is so that we can get both images the exact same size. And when you uh, use the crop tool, it uh, snaps to uh, different layers and we'll be using this layer here to snap it to here. We'll crop it, I'll turn that off, Control shift s and I'll save this one as side. And I'll save it as a JPEG. Okay, and then we uh, go into the history and I'm sorry, go into the history and, and uh, go back one step, uh, which is undoing the crop, and then we'll move this reference layer here, holding Shift so that it uh, 
that it moves perfectly in the horizontal direction, doesn't shift in the vertical, and we'll uh, have this match up about the middle of the uh, of the front face here, and we'll turn the side one off, and then we'll use the crop tool again, snap it to the layer, yep, and crop that, and turn that layer off, and save this one as a JPEG front. Okay, save that. And if we open those pictures up, we can see that uh, I'll just go to details. Oh, it doesn't actually show the resolution. Actually, yes, it does. Uh, we can see that the resolution is exactly the same for the both of them. And if we open them up, we can flip between them and see that they're pretty well lined up. Okay, so that's uh, all for preparing the images. Let's take them into uh, our 3D program and begin modeling. Now in the 3D application, in this case Maya, let's set up our view planes. So I'll go into the front view here and go view, image plane, import image, and I'll use the front view. You can see in the perspective that it uh, appears. So if you go to the attribute editor, if you just set it through looking through the camera, it'll only display in the particular viewport that you set it to. But it can also be handy to have it in all views, so that we can, once we have the side view as well, we can see both of them in the perspective together. So in the side view, I'll go view, import image, image, and I'll add the side. And that also is by default set to all views. And if we go to the perspective, we can see the two of them together line up quite well and we can begin modeling.